it is. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, family, we are here again. Larry and PD here. Uh, you know, we got an awesome, uh, are we going to call it a show? Should we call it a show now? You can call it a show if you want to. We can? Okay, cool. Well, we got an awesome show for you. Oh, oh. <laughs> I just got excited. My gosh. Uh, we're talking to PD about the sermon from last Sunday. It was a really, really, really good one. Uh, I actually was in the service, but I was taking pictures, so I didn't really get to listen to it. But... Shameless plug, I listened on the podcast. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. I listened on the podcast. Well, so bad. if you don't have the Hope Valley podcast, definitely get that. You can get it on all of the podcast yeah. things, right? Yeah, I, most. I most think, of yeah, them. So it's definitely Apple, yes. definitely uh, Spotify, and uh, Amazon. Cool. I was, I was going to say so, you probably didn't have to say anything after Apple. But. Speaking of shame, <laughs> we're, we're a diverse church. It's a multi-platform oh, church. Multi-platform, yes, multi-generational, yeah, multi-political, all the multi. Multi-multi. I um, love it. Speaking of shameless plug, what is today's episode brought to us by? <gasps> oh, today's episode is brought to you by, as always, Hope Valley Youth. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> we got camp coming up. If you got a middle or high schooler, you want them at camp. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I believe the core line that one week will change everything because I've seen it change everything in our students. Also, by the membership process, <laughs> yeah. that's going to be amazing. We've been filming that. It's super incredible. Oh, so excited about and, this. And once it launches, if you're watching the videos, just hang out for a quick second after the video is done because we got a little something there. <laughs> something there for you. We got, a, we got an end credit scene there for you. <laughs> <laughs> that actually makes me very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it should. There's been a lot said on open the, mics. Yeah, there has been a lot said on these mics, but uh, I didn't put anything too too wild in there um also we have baptisms coming up don't we we, have we do coming. yeah well so the class is sunday so <gasps> i mean it's every every fourth sunday yes so if somebody wants to be baptized yes if you want to know what it is or why it is or how it is uh tied to your life we'd love to talk to you about that yeah baptism is amazing ironically no, well not ironically you actually baptized me yeah 10 years ago in a pool in a pool yes and then i waded in the water instead of doing a cannonball in like everybody thought i was gonna do yeah everybody expected the cannonball like, everybody was like, I, was, I, was, I was really i was really impressed <laughs> I, 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 I figured my it was a slow walk it was you come down the i went like all the way to the end of the pool instead yeah. of doing the ladder i figured <laughs> i was like man if i go all the way under that kind of just i just baptized myself that was my thought back then so <laughs> So, so that was actually my thought. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> you accidentally bad yourself. Exactly. Like as you were in the water, I was like, I, I didn't know how sense. it worked back then. That's fair. Uh, um, so all of that being said, we got something super amazing for you. PD, let's start out. Can you tell us what verse you came out of this Sunday? Yeah, so we were in Luke chapter, uh, chapter 10. 10, yes. Yes, and so we were uh, tackling the second half of Luke chapter 10. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's Jesus talking about, it's the discourse about uh, loving God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus was questioned by a lawyer who was trying to kind of sort out what does, how do you get to eternal life? How do you live forever? Mm -hmm. That's what he was trying to kind of grasp at, yeah. trying to understand. And, um, and then Jesus responds to this question with a story. Hmm. And it's the story that we refer to as the Good Samaritan. Yeah. Um, I didn't really jump into the story of the Good Samaritan. We're going to tackle more of that uh, this week. Okay. Um, and kind of come at it from a different angle. Because I think we misunderstand Jesus' disposition towards the lawyer. Mm -hmm. And even Jesus' disposition towards creation as a result of that. Gotcha, gotcha, of, gotcha. As a part of this discourse. But mm -hmm. yeah, so... Uh, that's what he was talking about. Yeah. Um, I, I highlighted in the sermon um, that it's not a question of whether or not God is speaking, because he's most certainly speaking to us. Mm -hmm. But I took a, a generous amount of time to describe uh, recognizing the voice of God yeah, when yeah. he does speak. Yeah, I, I, I love the fact that like even before you got to that verse in Luke, you actually opened with the Old Testament. Like, yes. Like what took you there? Like what, what was the... How do I say? What was the the draw to opening with that and talking about yeah. Samuel before you went into Absolutely. Luke? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a little bit behind the curtain on preaching is, um, you know, one of the things that we know means a lot to us as people um, as uh, is stories. Stories mm -hmm. matter so much. And Jesus taught in stories yeah. for that reason. Right. Um, and he used these emotional word pictures in people's lives to illustrate the truth that he's trying to share. And um, so I was kind of, I was just searching my, my, my heart, my mind, my 
history like it just is there a story of a time that i heard from god and was mm. confused about what i heard gotcha and that would be clear enough to share gotcha gotcha because right? oh, sometimes exactly. sometimes when we hear from god it's it's messy enough it's jumbled up in our heart enough that even the process of discerning whether or not we've heard from god mm -hmm. can be kind of messy mm, so yes. i i have a burden i have something i'm wrestling with i have something i think i'm hearing i have something that that i'm trying to understand and then i talk to people about it and it's still messy mm. and it can be kind of a process but uh, i was like oh samuel heard from god as mm, a young boy i love it yeah and and the scripture does us the benefit or the favor of having a really cleaned up version of the story gotcha. right it's, yes it happens so fast that's that so true. god spoke he thought it was eli god spoke he thought it was eli and eli was like no 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 no. i'm not calling you god is calling you so next time you hear me talk to you in mm. your sleep it's god talking to you so respond yeah. speak lord for your servant hears yeah and so uh because it was it was a it was contained um the beauty of it is that we did it, the the uh, the old testament and the new testament we're not talking about two different gods it's it's mm -hmm. the same story being written it's the same god being described it's yeah. the same human condition being um wrestled with it and being revealed and being healed and so when we see the old testament and the new testament and the same message man i feel like we're, we're really cooking with fire there that's good yeah. that's 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 really awesome um you know outside of the samaritan i know you said that you know you're going to be elaborating more on some of the things you yeah. got from the samaritan yeah, yeah. In, you know this coming sunday um was there anything else that you got that like you wanted to share, but like did, didn't share, didn't make the cutting room floor. Yeah. Or was there anything that you said that you wanted to elaborate on a little bit? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so, I mean, so much of what I feel like God is leading us to right now is responding to him. So uh, in some way, I felt like uh, I couldn't say everything that needed to be said. Mm. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, like sometimes it. you feel like, oh, I have a complete thought, but I, but I really kind of in an unusual way, I felt like uh, God wanted to complete the thought from Sunday. Mm -hmm. So my hope is that when we close the service and worship, yeah. that people heard from God about the things that he wanted to talk to, gotcha. to them about. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, that does make sense. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's almost like using inference. Mm -hmm. It's like God's got something he wants to say to you. And now let's worship <laughs> yes. and hear from God. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see what happens. I dig it. Um, so that was a big part of it. I actually had a note here that, um, oh, well, this is really has to do with the Good Samaritan, but um, this is something that, that, that went on the, that, that, that I cut from the message, which is why we didn't get into the Good Samaritan, mm -hmm. just for, for lack of time. Yeah. But um, there was a study done. Um, with these seminary students. They didn't know they were in a study, mm -hmm. but they were told to go and minister to a classroom about the story of the Good Samaritan. Okay. Okay. And so um, they positioned somebody between the location they started at and the position that they were going to minister about the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. They positioned somebody there who had a need and interrupted the, the seminary student on their walk to go talk about the Good Samaritan. Wow. And, and what, I, where's this going? Yeah, it's, it's, exactly, going? it's exactly what it's, you oh think. So gosh. it's exactly what you think. So so this is what they found. When uh, the seminary student, when the pastor had enough time, they turned aside to the person who had a need hmm. and ministered to that person. And then they showed up in the class and ministered accordingly. Yeah. When the person was told they didn't have enough time or that they were running late or that they had to be there quickly, yeah. the people totally disregarded the person with a need, wow. didn't see them or ignored them or put them off Wow. and got to the class to go teach on the story of the Good Samaritan. Okay. And I think, what a terrible irony. Yeah, yeah. No, it's but, better than I thought it was going to be. I thought oh. you were going to say all of them just passed the guy. No, no, That's no, 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 it was enough in no. the, it was, it was enough in the hearts of the people who were going to minister it that when they felt like there was enough time, uh, they, they turned aside because it was really in their heart. Mm -hmm. But when it, it actually, the reason it, I didn't talk about it on Sundays because it has less to do with being, being a good neighbor. Uh, and it has more to do with our relationship with time and scarcity of time and scarcity of resource. Yeah. And there's a whole scarcity mindset that creeps in. Yeah. We've, we've talked about that before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have. Yeah. So, so the scarcity mindset that I don't have enough time, all of a sudden you don't have enough of anything Yeah. and you, you don't even see the enormous amount of resourcing that we have 
um, because we're trapped by our scarcity mindset. Gotcha. And so that was that was a fascinating thing as I was studying for the sermon mm -hmm. that I decided uh, okay. didn't fit into the sermon. Because gotcha. even gotcha. in this conversation, I'm not doing it full justice. I, I, I'm, I'm you know, not doing your full deep dive. <laughs> people, yeah, people like, you, know, like, you have to pick up, right? Like, so if you've got a scarcity mindset, you're less likely to be kind to someone who's in need. Um, and what's funny is in both cases, there was enough time. It was just the mindset of the person going. Mm. So like it, this, there was the same amount of time, but one person thought they didn't have time. Gotcha. So their perception of what time, like the amount of time that they had actually changed how they responded to what was in their heart. Yes. That's terrifying. Isn't that amazing? Jeez, that's amazing. I feel like that's it's probably its own. I it's, feel like uh, even like not talking about it now, yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. man, this really deserves its own yeah. conversation. I mean, how much, if that's just scarcity of time, how do you, like, what would the impact of scarcity of money result in? Mm. Or the scarcity of relationship? Or the yeah. scarcity of mercy or grace? Yeah. And like, how would we relate? to people and things differently if mm -hmm. we did live live out of a scarcity mindset. Yeah. How much more willing to turn aside would we be in yeah. all the ways that God might be inviting us to turn aside to minister the wow. deposit that's in us? Wow. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, and even talking about like, for instance, scarcity of grace. Yeah. I mean, and you somewhat touched on that in in the the message, that yeah. aspect of like the two most insidious I love the, the fact that you use the word insidious, by the way. Like, like when, when I, so when I listened to it on the podcast, like I was like, because you know, you, I think about think about what you said, you know, meditate yeah. on it. It's like, man, what was what was there for me? What can I what can yeah. I take out of this? Because even when you were talking about hearing the voice of God yeah. from coaches and parents and youth pastors, yeah. shameless plug, uh, when you were talking about that, um, you didn't mention like this message or Sunday mornings and yeah, stuff like that. So, yeah. but, but that being said, yeah. like that's one of the places as well. If you watch on the podcast, like coming to the word being preached exactly. is, is a, is a significant, a primary mm -hmm. way that the, that God has spoken to his people yeah. all the way from, all the way from uh, Noah, who was a preacher of righteousness. Yeah. We learn in Hebrews mm -hmm. um, from Deuteronomy is a series of sermons about the, the, the 10 words from God or that what we call the 10, Ten commandments, commandments yeah. was, was called the 10 words. And it's these, these 10 ways of living and relating to God and relating to people and creation that would make the, make the Israelites distinct in all the world. Like, so the, but Deuteronomy is a, a sermon and, and it's a series of sermons mm -hmm. on the Ten Commandments and wow. how to relate. So yeah, it's been, and then obviously Deuteronomy with Moses preaching yeah. all the way through the prophets preaching all the way through all the ways that God has ministered to his people. Preaching has been at the center of it yeah. um, from almost the very beginning of human existence. Yeah, no, it's good. It's, it's helpful as well too, because even when like I was meditating on it and I was like, yeah, he said like, yeah, the, the two most insidious things. I was like, he didn't say insidious. Like oh, that must be said, must be my head. He yeah, didn't. No, no, and then I, I listened to it again. I was like, oh no, he said insidious. I love it. Like, yeah. come on, I absolutely yeah. love it. Um, but you talked about this aspect of having a soft heart full of humility yeah. before God. Yeah. And a hard heart before God. Yes. And you you leaned into the hard heart first, and you talked about these two most insidious, <laughs> you know, ways yeah. that it shows, it's and it's yeah. um, it's this aspect of <clears throat> pretending. Yeah. And performing, like, can you can you elaborate a little bit on them? Yeah, absolutely. On that? Yeah. Uh, just to bring you, you people up to speed, when 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 Jesus was questioned about what is the greatest law, or how do you get to heaven? Jesus is like, well, what's the Bible say? Basically, yeah. And the lawyer responds with, "Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself." And Jesus is like, "You got that right. You nailed it. Good job. Proud of you." Um, but then it says in Luke that the lawyer was seeking to justify himself, yeah. And so he followed up with the question, "Well, who is my neighbor?" Yeah. And so the the idea is that when we hear from God, because it's not a question of whether or not He's speaking, mm -hmm. but it's a question of whether or not we hear Him and whether it will really whether or not we'll respond to him when we recognize that it is him. Gotcha. And so we talked about the humble in the, the yeah. Part. The so part. so we the, also made the room very uncomfortable with that as well too with the yeah. with the yeah. This is basically saying if you're on lean this way politically, it's this person, or if you lean this way yeah, politically, oh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. this person. Like sometimes <laughs> sometimes hearing from God can be the last person on exactly. earth that you would yeah. expect to hear from. Mm -hmm. And the Good Samaritan was the equivalent of QAnon or Antifa, yeah. right? Like, so so it's like it's like you, yeah. you know depending on which side you're on, you're like there's no possible way that person could bring benefit yeah. to my life or to the world. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was like, that's the person he chose to illustrate mm -hmm. the kingdom of like. 
what it means to be a neighbor. Gotcha. Yeah. So, gotcha. Uh, but you're asking, uh, I kind of lost track of your you question. No, 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 you're good. You were elaborating about, on that aspect well, of pretending and performing. Pretending and performing. Yeah. So, so the lawyer, when he felt the gap between what the law was calling us to, to love God and love our neighbor and what he was able to do or willing to do or capable of doing. Mm. Uh, he responded by trying to negotiate. Well, who is my, who is my neighbor after all? Like, yeah. like so it's not, it's definitely not Jim across so the street, right? Definitely it's not. Can't him. Be him. Yeah, yeah. And I should not yeah. be yeah. Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> right? Like it's not, what is that from? I don't know. I mean, I, I, no. we're just it's credit, always in my mind. We'll credit it to Nacho Libre. Awesome. That's where we'll credit it to. <laughs> I'll we'll just credit so, it to Libre. So he, you hear this, um, so, so he tries to justify himself, but, and, and it's obvious because he's kind of asking the question and, and Luke tells us that that's what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, we can respond when we feel the gap by, by running from it, by hiding from it, by negotiating with it. And, and those are pretty easy to tell. You can tell when somebody's running away or hiding. Yeah. But what's harder to miss because it looks so good on the outside mm -hmm. is when somebody, ourselves included, is pretending or performing. So pretending to love a neighbor, right? By being, um, by presenting yourself as someone who loves your neighbor, by doing enough things, either on social media, getting pictures of yourself doing something, yeah. but really not loving your neighbor, not really not taking care of them. It's like being seen doing good things yeah. instead of doing good for the sake of doing good for the benefit of that person yeah. because God has been good to us. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it does. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's kind of a, kind of a trend, right? Like, so, so like, uh, some missions trips are that way. Um, <laughs> yes, you know, um, yes, indeed. There's a, so, so helping people so that we look good or so that we feel good. Yeah. Um, there's a lot said about, kind of I'll just, just for the sake of awkwardness like white savior complex yes white people mm -hmm. helping going to Africa color, taking pictures with babies Africa, yep. just, mm -hmm. yeah, so I didn't like, know if you were going to touch on it I was like is he going to do it I was like I really hope he does it I really hope we're going to go there it would have been, would have been <laughs> dishonest if he didn't so so like you know I, I do need to say I, in defense of people who are doing missions not everybody who's taking pictures with the babies and going overseas and helping people of color yeah, of course. is motivated by a white savior complex. Yes, so some course, people are just course, living yeah. out of the fullness. But I think right now it's really easy to throw rocks at people is, and be yeah, like, well, just another, yeah. it's like, no, we need to be careful how we judge them. And I, I, think, agree. I think that that would be Jesus's caution. He's like, not everybody that you think is doing bad is doing bad. Yeah. And not everybody that you think is doing good is doing good. Mm. And so let's leave it to Jesus to sort that out. Yeah. Um, and be faithful to obey what he's calling us to do. So yeah. the pretending is insidious because it looks good and it feels good. Mm -hmm. I, I was an expert pretender and performer. Yes. Um, I resonate with that. Yeah. I just, Very much man, so. <laughs> I was, I was going to, you know, maybe I was going to be at all the prayer meetings and I was going to be lifting my hands at the right time of the song, amening at the right time of the sermon, mm -hmm. um, being caught doing good things. It was before social media is what it is now mm -hmm. when I was younger. And, but, but it's like, if, if I had had Instagram, it would have been, it would have been me at all the right places. Yeah. at all the right times doing, doing all the right, the right things, things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and and you would have been taking pictures the entire time made oh, sure it went up made pictures sure of myself right hashtags doing all the things it, yeah. all the things yeah and so uh the pretending and performing it looks so good from the outside mm -hmm. the trouble is you know G jesus warns about uh doing things in view of man he specifically in praying inside yeah. of people mm -hmm. but but he's like for the people who want credit from people mm -hmm. they already got it that's your reward like, like congr congratulations good, good you, job you got <laughs> doing, doing good things yeah but like we want we want a greater reward than being seen by man yeah right we want the kingdom mm -hmm. we want we want intimacy and fellowship with God, and that's what He's inviting us into. Mm -hmm. So, uh, pretending is so much like, or the performing is so much like pretending. Pretending is like your heart is far from it, but you're going to create the appearance of it. And um, this is all part of a. I learned about this first in a, in a study called the Gospel Centered Life. It was a it was a notebook that changed my life, and um, it was a Bible study. So. You know, you can look it up. The Gospel Centered Life. It transformed it. It's a good one. That was actually the first small group that. Oh, you were part of that small group. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that was it was, it was great, it was mind amazing. blowing for yeah. me because you know, and it kind of revealed, it gave me language to describe a process that I had been through, mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to, under, I like, I didn't fully understand it myself. Yeah. Until we went through that study, and I was like, that's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. 
I was pretending and performing. And then I yeah. had an encounter with God's grace. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I didn't have to cover the, dis the distance between what God was calling me to and what I brought to the table. Yeah. He was going to fill that gap. Mm. And what was required for me and what's required of us yeah. is when we're, when we, when we feel the gap between what God calls us to and what we bring to the table, uh, we, we can choose humility. Wow. We can choose God. I'm not enough for this. Like, yeah. like the, the, the lawyer, instead of choosing to justify himself mm -hmm. in an alternate version of this story, yeah. like, and it, and it actually happened. It's not, a, that part's not a parable, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like in an alternate moment, maybe, maybe later in this man's life, mm -hmm. It, or, you know, maybe somebody else's conversation. He says, love God and love your neighbor. And then he's pierced with the reality that he doesn't, he's not, he doesn't love Jim across the street. Yeah. And instead of being like, well, who's my neighbor? He could have said, help me. I, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think I can do that. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't even want to do that. And I think, yeah. um, I was talking with, that's so honest. It's just like, I don't want to do it. Like, that, yeah, that, that's hard. Yeah, but that's honest. Yeah, it's I was hard. talking with Scott Williams, mm -hmm. who you know, yeah, um, just a, a great friend of mine and of ours. Yeah, of ours. Yeah, Scott's um, great. But he was saying just praying, um, ugly. Pr Actually, he's here in the room. What what is it? Praying ugly prayers, honest prayers, uh, blunt prayers, blunt, blunt prayers. prayers. I think was the word. Blunt, blunt prayers. <laughs> so so praying so praying those blunt prayers. Like God, I I don't even want to love Jim. Like, mm -hmm. can we exclude Jim from this commandment to love our neighbors? Yeah. And, you know, again, Jesus answers the question and it's not about who else is out there, but it's about heart change and life change in us. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, that's really good. Um, that's really good. And I mean, I know you in the, in the sermon, you actually elaborated really well on if we find ourselves in those places, how we can come to communicate with others and like let people in on what's going on with us yeah. and let, really let Jesus in on what's going, the blunt prayer, yeah. you know, so to speak, it's like, God, yeah. Hey, what's going on? I don't know how to do this. I don't know where, I don't know what's going on, confessing to people and letting them yes. pour into your life and, yes. and things like that. Um, do you have a way or would you suggest a way of getting out in front of the performing and pretending. So like hypothetically, I'm asking for a friend, right? <laughs> for, yeah, I'm yeah. asking for a friend. If this friend of mine knows that he has a tendency to perform and pretend just because yeah. of other things, yeah. um, how would you say to get in front of that? Is it just to get open with Jesus early or get open with people early? Or is there something else that you would say will help you get in front of the performing and pretending and really, you know, because you said in your sermon, you know, humility is really kind of never our knee jerk response. I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not our knee jerk response, yeah, yeah. but it's a decision that we have to make ahead of time. Yeah. How can we position our hearts to, to, not, the, pretend to, perform. to not pretend to perform and walk in the humility just yeah. on a regular basis? And, and that's tricky, especially the perform part, because uh, our salvation is it it's not earned mm -hmm. it but it's not without effort yeah right like yeah. Or not not our salvation the christian life right yes. like salvation is free it's a gift but then walking out the christian life requires effort yes so it's, it's not a matter yes. of earning better way of saying it but, yeah. the, but we mm -hmm. but we do have to work in it and so so when we talk about performing performing we're not talking about like abdicating our Christian responsibility or a human responsibility mm -hmm. in relating to God and relating to his people and to his mission. What we're talking about is, is, um, living out of, I, I think the, we're, we're living out of the love of God instead of trying to earn the love of God. We're gotcha. living out of our acceptance instead of trying to earn acceptance. Gotcha. Um, but in terms of getting ahead of it, um, honestly, I think, I think what, I think the only way to get ahead of it is to have a revelation of the, the breadth and the depth of God's love for us. Mm. That um, my insecurity or my my shame yeah. is not hidden from God. Mm. Right? So like, yeah. so like, why would I pretend? Why would I perform? I would pretend or I would perform because I'm afraid that I would be found to be lacking. Mm. Yeah. Right. Don't know that feeling at all. You know, yeah, right. never, never felt that ever. <laughs> I would be My found. I, I, I would be found <laughs> lacking. I would be found. Um, perhaps people would. Uh, 
I, I wouldn't be impressive. Hmm. It, it's really, I wouldn't be a lot of things or I could be found to not be a lot of things that yeah. I would rather people think about me. Yeah. But when I understand what God really truly thinks of me, all of a sudden I don't have to be as impressive. Hmm. Right. Yeah, that's like, really good. Yeah, like, it, like, and then, and then, not only on, not only on a God level, but but there are people in my life who I don't need to impress. Yeah. Right. Not that I need to impress anybody. Yeah. But there are people who know who know me, know me, mm-hmm. like who you know I've confessed sin to, who I've confessed weakness to, confusion to, bewilderment to, yeah. anger or sadness. Right. Mm-hmm. Like there there are people who know me, know me. Yeah. And, you know, they're they're not. They're not Im- impressed by me when I do well, mm-hmm. and they're not disappointed by me when I'm not doing well. Yeah, and that reinforces God's God's thoughts about me. Mm-hmm. And so now I, I'm much more comfortable in my own in my own weakness. I'm much more comfortable in my frailty. Yeah, but I'm also so much more comfortable to try new things and to take chances mm-hmm. and to. Yeah. do things that I never would have done yeah. and I'm, I'm so much more free to fail I'm, <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> talk about that. I'm so much more free to fail because because they don't need me to succeed to love me wow. like these ideas don't need I don't need to do well they are going to mm. love me no matter what and that creates a lot of confidence and comfort for me that's good does that make sense no that makes a lot does, of sense did and I, I answer the question you, you did answer the question okay. yes um, hearing your answer though it's just like man we really need to have that scarcity mindset uh, podcast we really need to talk about that because it's just like <laughs> what, what you're talking about is and correct me if I'm wrong it's this this fear that there's not enough love from Jesus to cover yeah. the distance yeah it's just like there's not a love no yeah. no he loves me but he doesn't love me that much yes he's gonna provide for me eh, he's not gonna provide that much he's yeah. gonna be there for me eh, he's not gonna be there for me that much yeah but really that revelation of nope there's there's more than enough yeah like, like, like he couldn't he literally couldn't yeah. Love you more. Yeah. And like, however much you think, love you think he would need to have for you to still love you through this. Yeah. He's got more of it. Right, right, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. So there's no. No, it's so good. It's yeah. so good. So in the gospel centered life, it, show, it it has this diagram. It's a, it's like a greater than symbol, mm-hmm. but it grows. And so it says that as we mature, our understanding of the righteousness of God grows. Mm-hmm. And as that grows, so does our understanding of our own sinfulness grow. Yeah. So like what's beautiful is like if you've got a scarcity mindset, we we use pretending and performing to close the gap. Yeah. And it requires more and more performance and more and more performing Mm -hmm. uh, and, and pretending or. Are, are like it's, it's exactly what you're describing. The grace of God grows. Yeah. The, they use the cross. The cross of God grows yeah. to bridge the gap between the two, mm-hmm. and, a, and and it closes the gap. Yeah. On our behalf, so like yeah, God can good. close the gap, or we can close the gap. I'm yeah. going with God closing. Yeah, I yeah. can't close that gap. gap. I tried, and yeah. it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It didn't work at all. Um, no, that's really good. That's 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 super helpful. Um, I guess closing. Yeah. But this is probably going to be a longer answer. Um, we have a very vast uh, congregation in the sense of we have people that are just surrendering their lives to Jesus or really aren't even walking with Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To kind of exploring faith. Exactly. Yeah. We have people that have been walking with Jesus for forever and a day. They're doing like our Leadership 215 uh, course. Shameless plug. <laughs> uh, our Leadership 215 course and things of that nature that are learning these this deeper understand, understanding and are basically doing seminary light. Yeah. Um, and I know when you're you're crafting a message and when, when with with preaching, you're trying to get something for everybody. Yeah. But I know there's something you have to trim off the top and something you have to trim off the bottom. Right. To be able to get to everybody. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. What would be your biggest takeaway for someone that's just walking, with, learning to walk with Jesus, or doesn't walk with Jesus? Yeah. And what would be your biggest takeaway for the someone? Biggest challenge for somebody who's exactly. Been walking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a that's a neat question. I think for the person who is at the beginning, exploring faith, I would say the God of the universe wants to speak to you. Hmm. I would even say the God of the universe has been speaking to you. Okay. Um, But you might not have recognized it. Yeah. You might not have had the vocabulary to to understand it Mm -hmm. or to to like... walk with it well. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, so hey, that's a dangerous thing to say, but I, I do believe that God is constantly wooing us to Himself, and and the the greatest way to test what God has been speaking to us is through His Word, and through the confirmation of, and by the witness of other people, right? Yeah. So it's like walking with the Spirit of God, uh, walking with the Word, uh, like knowing Him that way, but then walking with one another, and so, um, I would. To the person who's at the beginning, I would say, um, go ahead and turn aside to that thing that God is speaking to you mm -hmm. because there's more that he wants to say to you. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, the sermon talked about the kinds of things that he would talk about. So you could listen to the sermon to, to understand that. I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying he's not giving lottery numbers. He's not giving... Um, He's not, he, that's not the kind of stuff he's talking to us about. He's talking to, he's trying to reveal uh, his character mm -hmm. and his nature and his purpose yeah. to us. And he'll use everything at his disposal to help us hear that. Yeah. So for the person who's been walking with Jesus for a long time, I would say, don't forget how absolutely beautiful and amazing it is when God speaks to your heart. Because sometimes you can wow. go, yeah, I think sometimes sometimes we go yeah. through seasons where we didn't hear God very clear. Maybe we were reading our Bible or maybe we stopped reading our Bible because we weren't here. It felt dry mm -hmm. and it felt like so we just kind of go through the go through the motions. Yeah. I think it would uh, remember again. I mean, Paul told Tim Timothy, don't forget the gift that was given to you by the laying of hands. And I would say, remember again, the goodness of God and the beauty and the pleasure of hearing God's voice and go after it. Yeah. Because I think too many of us as believers go through the motions of faith, go through the motions of religion. Um, you know, so there's like two extremes, right? There's like, there's like the person who doesn't expect God to speak, mm -hmm. doesn't pursue his yeah. voice and then there's a person who's like hyper obsessed with it mm -hmm. <laughs> god wendy's a burger king wendy's a burger king wendy's let me burger know king. Yeah. let me know yeah 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 and, and we all know the answer to that one yes yes we do and so <laughs> oh you can <laughs> i'm gonna answer it yeah, so, we're, we're, keeping, we're keeping it real here man. so, so I, I think it's just an invitation again and then and then to examine your to examine our hearts and ask God, in what ways have we been pretending or performing and going through the motions of religion as opposed to hearing and responding to the voice of God? That's good, man. Yeah. That's really good. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. No, it's, yeah. it's, it's really good. I know that's like a, a hard question, and I kind of just... You know, no, I really like that question. Uh, I really I'm going to be thinking about that. <laughs> um, sprung on you. But I mean, unless there's anything you wanted to add... No, that's it. Thank you so much. Man, this is really you. exciting. This so, is exciting. This is super um, fun. Yeah. This is so, all fun. Uh, if there's things that you want to know about, uh, things that you want us to tackle um, in this kind of format, uh, please do not hesitate to ask if you're listening on the podcast. Don't hesitate. It's on video. It's on our YouTube page. Um, and if it's uh, if you're on YouTube, it's also on the podcast. Yes. And if you are on YouTube, like and subscribe. I had to say it. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. More people will be able to see it that way. <laughs> like, is that real? Yeah, that's real. Like it's, there's an algorithm. It's oh, insane. Yeah. Hack the algorithm. Right? Seriously. Well, guys, thanks for joining us. This has been absolutely amazing. Don't forget to check out the podcast so you can actually listen to uh, the sermon that Pastor David gave last week. And uh, we hope to see you guys if you're in the Denver area. We hope to see you this Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Love y'all.